Shalom Chavrin. <clears throat> Today is November the 28th. It is uh, 11 p.m. my time, and by the time this video I get to release it, probably the early hours in the morning, uh, tomorrow morning when I get to the office, I'll uh, try to upload this video. I got several um, messages from friends here uh, today regarding the Third Temple and uh, the, uh, a lot of news coming out, that, that uh, a lot of reports that Israel may be getting ready to build the Third Temple. Uh, one report that came from, a, from a, a precious friend, they sent me a video of a, of a young lady um, that did a video regarding the Third Temple and uh, has a lot of her information very accurate. Uh, the only thing that I did see, and, and, and not, to, not anything to discredit this precious little sister, I, I won't call her name, but uh, uh, I, I did send her a little message there to let her know that the uh, the particular synagogue that has been granted to uh, to to be rebuilt in the old uh, Jerusalem quarter there, that that's not the actual third temple that they're speaking of building there. Now that's an article that was released today in the Jerusalem Post, uh, where they speak about the um, uh, the synagogue that was destroyed back in in the 1948 Independence War. Uh, that that particular synagogue is called the. Um, just looking it up here real quick for you here. That's the uh, t uh, yeah the Tiferet uh, Israel synagogue, or Tiferet Tiferet Yisrael synagogue, uh, that was in the uh, the old Jewish quarter there. I remember when I lived in Israel, you could still see the archway there. If you've ever been in the uh, uh, in Israel, you've been to the Jew uh, the Jewish quarter. Kind of like there in the, in the middle of the atrium, you might call it there, where you have the different shops and stuff in the Jerusalem Quarter before going to the Wailing Wall. Um, on the that would be on the west side of that particular area there. You would see a little uh, uh, an archway, beautiful archway there, and that was what had that was left standing of that particular temple or that synagogue at that time there. Uh, but anyway, that the municipality is uh, is pretty much paved the way to allow the building of that. There was an, an anonymous donor who uh, donated 50 million NIS uh, to, the, to this building of this uh, particular synagogue. But this synagogue is not, though, the building of the third temple. But, uh, but let's, don't, let's don't cut everything short here, though, because yes, there is news coming out of Israel, out of also some of the, uh, the Muslim uh, publications as well that speak of the Third Temple. Now, Ruth Shiva uh, published an article, that's Israeli National News, uh, Channel 7. Uh, they also have online, um, you can listen to it live online. They published an article called, Muslims Claim Netanyahu Plans to Build, in their quotations, a false holy temple. Netanyahu's latest building plan for Jerusalem is none other than the Third Temple, claims Alask uh, Foundation. The Alaska officials warned that the new Likud is planning to build the false Third Holy Temple and divide the Muslim compound. Muslims' paranoia of the Jews on the Temple Mount had reached panic stages even before this uh, week's Likud primaries that placed the Jewish leadership faction leader Moshe uh, Phelan in a, in a uh, ranking that assures his election to the Knesset in January. Anyway, the article just goes on to talk about that, talks about how that Israel has constantly enforced the no praying, no prayer books. You can't take your talit up there, or you can't wear the seat. Uh, I mean, you do good to be able to visit the Temple Mount and wear, wear a kippah, or a yarmulke, you might call it there. Anyway, um, for my rabbinical brethren, I, I want to just kind of talk to you as well in this video here. Uh, those of you that may not know, I have done a number of videos on this very subject. Uh, back last year before the push for the statehood of Palestine, I released a video that, uh, I don't know if you'd call it, it went viral, but it's been watched tens of thousands of times. And a lot of people questioned whether or not it was actually accurate that the Palestinians would get a state and the Third Temple, especially the Third Temple, not so much that the Palestinians would get a stake, but they, there was a lot of question as to whether or not it was accurate 
because I mentioned in there that Netanyahu would take control of the Temple Mount. I think that's the way that video is titled for those of you that have not watched that already. Um, but it's going to be true. But what you have to understand is what does this lead to? How does this come about? Now, in that particular video, I talk strongly about how that the Vatican is working behind the scenes to negotiate a peace plan between the Palestinians and the Jews. And even since then, though, I have actually come back and did a little correction to that video. Uh, and I want to make sure I state this again. The Palestinian state is only, it, it's really just the Palestinians, unfortunately, these people here are just a pawn that the Vatican is using to be able to push their statehood, uh, or excuse me, to push their agenda, which is to get control of many of the holy sites in Jerusalem. Now, this is not something that's done in the back anymore. This is something that's become public. Uh, the president, uh, uh, Shimon Perez, uh, by the way, is, is pushed back, starting back in 1993. It was uh, released in the news press then that they were trying to make a covenant with the Vatican. And that included even the building of the Third Temple alongside the Dome of the Rock. Now, uh, my dear friend Gershon Solomon, I know he is dead set against building it alongside the Dome of the Rock. He believes 100%, and I would be supportive with him, that the Dome of the Rock would have to be removed and the Third Temple would have to be built there, not alongside of it. And uh, uh, some person there also, a brother, I, I assume, or a sister, um, made a comment on one of my posts there that the Temple Institute, uh, that's Rabbi, um, oh gosh, I always know his name and every time I want to say it, I forget it. But anyway, the rabbi there that's over the building of the Third Temple with the Temple Institute, uh, I was told, opposes the idea of building alongside the Dome of the Rock. I, I didn't know that. And I've always said that I believe that he would be the one that would be part of building that alongside of there. And, and he still may very well do that, for the sake of just getting a third temple built. And now this is something though that the politicians are working on. Uh, as much as I love Benjamin Netanyahu, the Likud party as well, it is not what Hashem wants out of us. Not to say that he doesn't want us to have a third temple. He does, we have this in Ezekiel. But the question is, does God build this? Does Moshiach ben David build this and bring this down out of heaven? Or are we to build it ourselves? Now I know Gershon, he believes it. If we will just take the stand and build the temple, then Hashem will back us up. That Hashem, that's uh, the divine name for, actually it's not the divine name for God, but for those that may wonder, the Christian people that watch the videos there, um, that's what you would call Jehovah or, or Yahweh. But in any way, the Jews, we call it Hashem, which means literally the name. Um, but we, we realize that the building of the third temple, wonderful thing to happen, but in this particular case, the Vatican has got their hand in behind this. Now, I want to remind my Jewish brethren, as well as the Christian friends that, uh, that, that have been following these videos, let's go to the book of Daniel, which is Daniel, um, in chapter 11. And that, uh, let's actually, let's go to chapter 9 first. I just really need to read over with you this chapter, uh, Tet. Uh, for, the, for the Jewish brothers that, that, that watch these videos. Um, and, and by the way, I say that a lot of times. You have to understand, uh, Israel, out of over 100 nations that watch these videos, Israel is, ranks number nine in people that actually watch the videos there. I didn't know that for the longest time. There's literally hundreds of Jews that actually watch the videos. There are very well-known rabbis from around the world that watch these videos. And, and I count that an honor, my brethren, that you do. I know that many of you do this in secret, and I do count that a privilege that you would take the time to, to watch this. A very familiar passage, the 70 weeks of Daniel, we often refer to it starting with verse 24. Uh, Chav uh, I'm sorry, no. I don't have my class. Chav, uh, Chav Dalet, 24. 70 weeks are determined concerning thy people and concerning thy holy city. Keep that in mind. It's not just the Jewish people, but thy holy city. And to you brothers that correct me on saying uh, the 12 tribes of Israel are not Jews, uh, we know that, brothers. We, we, we really do. We do know that. It's just that we kind of lump ourselves all together as Jews because it's kind of stuck with us as a, as, as a people all of our lives. 
Um, anyhow, let's, let's move on here. Uh, to make an end of sins and to atone for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and seal up the vision and prophet and to anoint the most holy place. Uh, know therefore and understand uh, that, the, that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Yerushalayim until anointed prince shall be seven weeks and then for 62 weeks it shall be built again with uh, the squares and moat but in a, a troubled time. Now, and after 62 weeks shall an anointed one be cut off and, and none will be left to him and the people of a, uh, of a prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Now, that's the important part right there. The prince that shall come. Now, watch... Pardon me just a minute. I have something stuck on my tooth here. Watch what it says right here, though. The prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Uh, and excuse me, and the people of a prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. We know that Titus destroyed the city and the sanctuary. But there's a prince that's going to come, as I've pointed out to you in other videos before, that he's of the people that destroyed the city and the sanctuary. This is why I always keep bringing you back to Rome. You know, for you Christian people, um, wonderful people, uh, who was in who was in Israel? Who controlled our country when Jesus walked? Jesus of Nazareth walked the shores of Galilee and Jerusalem and different places like that. It was Rome. I mean, Rome was in control of everything. And we often say history has a way of repeating itself. And so, it's not anything unusual to see that Rome, no doubt, is going to get a foothold into our country once again, even though we are independent. This is what these negotiations are going on right now with Benjamin Netanyahu and, and the Vatican. And, of course, the Pope is coming over here in December. Uh, some precious uh, friend sent me a, an email asking for documentation. I did get your, your note. And, and brother, sister, whoever it may be, I forget now, uh, I will work on that for you, get you that documentation. It, it is public, though. You can easily find it on the Internet as well. But it is documented that they're working on. Uh, in this particular covenant, it's dealing with finances. Also, because the Vatican is wanting to take control uh, of many of the holy sites there in Jerusalem. Uh, so just keep this in mind here as we, as we talk a little bit. Uh, it says, Upon the wing of, a, of abomination shall come one who makes desolate until the decreed destruction is poured out on the desolator. Now, so this prince that shall come, keep that in mind. I want to take you, and, 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 and by the way, for those of you that watch these videos, uh, I'm going to get into to the, to the Christian Bible, Revelation, where John, who is a, uh, a, a, the Jewish writer John, writes about this very event as well. So my Jewish brethren that watch the video, keep in mind, that's also written in the Christian Bible as well. But let's look real quick over to chapter 11, uh, Yod Aleph. And um, let's go down. I want to take you to verse 23 to start with. And let me back up just a little bit, maybe to verse 21. And in his place shall stand up a vile person to whom the honor of the kingdom has not been given, but he shall come in without difficulty and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. And the force of the flood shall be swept away before him and shall be broken. Even the prince of the covenant. See, we're getting right back to that prince of the covenant again. So it's around that time. And that's that future event that we're seeing fixing to take place right before our eyes. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. For he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. Now, brother, sister, if you don't know, and if we don't really sit there and think about this, this small people are the Palestinians. And, and Palestinian brothers that are out there, there there's, uh, there's many uh, Palestinians that are Christian people as well. Satan is using you as a people, and I know that good God-fearing Palestinian people know better. I, I believe they would anyway. But Satan is using that Vatican, that Pope that's there now, and no doubt he'll pass away and there's going to be one that's going to take his place because the Bible says a more vile person will rise up in his place. But he is using you in order to get his foot in Israel. 
Now, this is where Revelation comes in on that. So let's just quickly, let me get the Christian Bible here. And, and, and brothers, you know, Rabbi Meister, I've met Rabbi Meister before, a uh, nice uh, older brother there, but uh, he says, you know, that the Christian Bibles is good Jewish literature. It's, it's more than just good Jewish literature. And, and Rabbi Winston, I'd have to say, brother, as well to yourself that, you know, we look and say, what, have we, what haven't we done right? And, and we, we realize that we have redemption, we have gula. We're looking for the redemption of our people. And yet we know that Daniel says right here, there's a time coming when there's a, a, an end of sin is to become, come and there's an end of, uh, of iniquity. And we know this is gula. And we're waiting for this to happen and it's, and it's around us. But all these things, you know, Rabbi Winston, I, I love that video where you say, you know, what haven't we done right? You know, does it take a war of Gog and Magog to wake us up? You know, I'm afraid it's going to take that for our own people. But, you know, the thing is, though, is this particular covenant that this prince that shall come is trying to sign with our people who comes up strong with a small people, which is none other than the Palestinians right here using them as a pawn to get his foot in the door to take control of our country, just as Rome took control back then. You remember the uh, Bible here, and we read in there how that the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the rabbinical people of that day, when they looked at, at John and they looked at Jesus, now, uh, now I'm not talking about John that wrote Revelations, two different guys there, uh, John the Baptist is who I'm talking about. You know, they wondered about Jesus, they said, you know, Will he deliver us from the hands of the Romans? And so when Jesus came, the Romans were in control and they looked to him to deliver them from the Romans. In fact, Rabbi uh, Mitzrahi, you point out that when, uh, when you do the video yourself, that Jesus, or excuse me, not Jesus, but you say Moshiach ben David, Moshiach is supposed to come and to bring peace and we don't have the peace. We're supposed to have a millennial reign and we don't have a millennial reign. But Daniel says here that there is to be a place where there's a cutoff in there that Mashiach would be cut off, not for himself. Of course not for himself. It was for us. You know, we are a priestly nation. What comes with being a priestly nation? We must bear the responsibility as priest to God that we offer the sacrifice for sins, not just for ourselves, but for all of Israel and to the, all the nations that are willing to come and to believe as well. So the Gentiles believed. They got blessed. But there were also many other Jews that believed as well. But we intentionally, God had to, blind, Hashem had to blind us that our fathers could not see. Why? In order to save life. Had, if we know that, let's say that Jesus was not Moshiach and a Moshiach comes now, and yet the word of Daniel... Of course, we know he couldn't come now because the temple had to be destroyed before Mashiach came. It's written in the Talmud. What are you going to do with it? Change what we think that the blessed rabbis said? They write that he's supposed to come and die before the destruction of the second temple and nothing happens? Come on, wake up. He did come. He did die. And not for himself, but for the world, for the sins of the world. He had to become that scapegoat. You know, he had to bury the sins far away. We offered up uh, the, 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 the uh, you know, the, the chief rabbi every year had to offer up the sins for the people. He took the scapegoat and laid his hands on him, confessed the sins of Israel and sent him out into the wilderness. And then the other goat, what does he do? Offers that for the sacrifice for the sins of Israel. Pardoning for the atonement for that once a year. Like the story of Joseph, you know. Joseph bore the sins of his brothers far away. That's right. He bore that sin far away, away from his father Jacob, so he didn't know what, we, what our forefathers did, throwed him into the ditch. But you know what? The Jewish people that are in Israel today, now, and the Jewish people from around the world, we are like the Benjamites. Benjamin, in other words, we're like Benjamin. Benjamin was never guilty of that. But the funny thing is, is when he goes down there, Joseph is wanting to hold him a prisoner and then puts the cup in his bag. Imagine that. The cup goes into Benjamin's bag. You know, why does the cup go into Benjamin's bag? Because 
God wanted us to know that we rejected Jesus as Moshiach at the communion table. And the funny thing is, he finds the cup in his bag when he's on his way back home, and they pull, the, you know, they pull over, or excuse me, not the, the cup itself, but this is the first time around. He's on the way. Where was the first rejection? Jesus was first rejected at the motel. Wouldn't let him in. The Babylon. No Babylon. No. No Babylon. Bishvilech. Lama. 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 You know? Come on. Why? Biglal. What, what do we do to Jesus when he was when his mother was pregnant with him and he goes to the, mo the motel? Yosef goes to the motel with him and what happens? We have no room for you. He was rejected right there. And how was he rejected to start with? Just like Yosef, he was sold out for, for so many pieces of silver. Jesus was sold out for so many pieces of silver. And so the, the money shows up at the hotel in his bag when he goes to give his uh, donkey provender. And, you know, for food and finds out the money is there and now they're all troubled and everything. It's, it's, to, it's to jog our minds, brother. Our hearts should be taking a look at this. Anyway, I, I'm sorry, I'm getting off on this. The, the point that I'm trying to make to you, though, the Christian Bible says here by the, the Jewish writer John, and in, in, it's called Revelation chapter 11, verse 1, Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. But leave out the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city underfoot for forty and two months. Now that's three and a half years according to our old Jewish calendar. Uh, and I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy a thousand two hundred and sixty days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees uh, and the two lampstands standing before the God of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, they must be killed in this manner. These have power to shut the heavens so that, that, that the rain falls not in the days of their prophecy. They have power over the waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Now, I'm not going to really get deep into the fact of the two witnesses. Uh, many of you know, I believe it's Moses and Elijah. The very gifts that they have is Moses and Elijah. It says that they're witnesses. They're not Baptists. They're not Methodists. They're not Presbyterians. Why? Because the Jews will not accept Christian denominational believers. Now, true, there's been many Christians that have led Jews to Christ. I thank God for that. I'm not against that. But you have to understand, Israel is not going to be tied up with any of these particular denominational beliefs. This is why you find that the 144,000 are virgins. Why are they virgins? They're not tied up with religious systems of this day. So, God has to send a witness. Who is a witness to who Moshiach was? Moses and Elijah. Do we have proof in the Tanakh that Moses and Elijah both come? Of course we do. Eliyahu, Elijah, he comes according to the scripture of Malachi 4. He comes and returns to us. According to uh, the, the Christians believe that John the Baptist was Elijah. Jesus says that he was Elijah. But he also said he truly shall come and restore all things. So Elijah must come and he must tell the Jews where we went wrong. Why is he a witness? To bear witness. He was there. He knows who Moshiach was. Same with Moshe. You ever notice, though, the interesting thing about the ministry, though, when it talks about the fire comes down and destroys their enemy, or comes out of their mouth, destroys their enemy, do you realize that Elijah did that when the soldiers came and irreverently come to him and everything, and he calls fire down out of heaven and says, if I'm a man of God, let it destroy you? I, I kind of wonder if that's not kind of the way the Gog and Magog goes down when, when the king of the north, when Russia and Iran and them try to come and invade, the two witnesses will be on the scene and they will call that fire of God down and destroy the enemies and put a stop to it. And another thing, let me tell you this here. Yes, this is showing us here in Revelation 11 that there will be a third temple built. Yes, there is going to be a Gentile that's going to tread down the city for 40 and two months, a specific number of time. In the video that I put, Netanyahu uh, takes control of the Temple Mount. I said in that video over a year ago that the Palestinian state would be the beginning of Revelation 11, beginning of Daniel's 70th week, the last week to start the countdown of that time. Now, but keep in mind, 
Uh, as I read to you over, did I read this to you yet or not? Let me just look real quick. Daniel 23. Yes, I did. Uh, where, where, you know, after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully for he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. That's the Palestinians. That's the Roman Vatican. The Catholic Church uses the Palestinians to get control. So really, the one correction that I did make in here that I kind of wondered about is is it the Palestinians that are treading down the holy city or is it really Rome that gets to tread down the holy city? Actually, it's both of them together. They only use the Palestinians to be able to pull off that plan. So, very interesting thing. Now, another thing here too, if you jump down in chapter 11 to verse 39, um, it says, and he shall deal with the strongest fortress with the help of a foreign god. Those whom he, uh, excuse me, uh, those whom he acknowledged, he will magnify with honor and he shall make them rulers over many and shall divide the land for a price. And do you not know that the covenant that they're trying to sign right now in December when the Pope is coming back to Israel is for a financial covenant? He will divide the land for a price. Benjamin, my dear brother, God bless you. But I tell you, my brother, when you make this covenant, I know you're pushing to get a third temple built, and God bless you for your stand and make that stand there to get it on the Temple Mount. That, that was the hold up. When Arafat died, I was actually leaving Israel in 2004, coming back to the United States. He died the same day I left Israel, oddly enough. But Arafat refused to allow the third temple built. That's why the plan did not proceed in 1993. He would never let it be built there, so therefore they didn't get that agreement there. I believe though, the Palestinian Authority that they have now in the West Bank is, is making that covenant and they're going to do that so that the temple can be built. Now, here's the bad part. It's not a bad part to build the third temple. To build in the wrong location, God will not honor that. Now, I'll stand on that right there, my brothers, my rabbinical brethren. Do not accept a temple that's not being built in the Holy of Holies, in the holiest site. I know that the whole Temple Mount is holy, thank God for that, but the, where the Holy of Holies stood, is where that rock comes out of that earth there. Gershon Solomon told me this beautiful story one time. He said to me, he tells me about how that the, um, how that a man come up as a tourist guide, sit there and they showed him all the different things of the Temple Mount when they'd taken control of it in 1968 at the Six Days War. Gershon was up there. He said the man took him around and showed him this, showed him that, took him inside the, the Dome of the Rock where the, where the rock come up, the mountain comes up out of the earth right there, a little small place right there. And he showed him that there, and he said, this here is where the Holy of Holies once stood. And Gershon finally looked at this man, and he said, sir, he said, why do you say these things to me? He said, because I have been sent from the presence of Almighty God to tell you that the God of Israel is now once again dwelling with his people. Gershon said that man before him and several other witnesses turned around and vanished right before their eyes. That's where the Holy of Holies stood. My brother and my sister, we are in a late hour. They're going to build a third temple. It's not going to be, I don't think, I could be wrong, but I believe it's going to be built next to the Dome of the Rock. That's not according to the Word of God. And God won't accept it like that. But the thing is, is then, what's it all being done for? Because the Vatican, see, Satan, he said he wanted to sit in the temple of God, be worshipped like as if he was God. Now that's in the Christian Bible right there. And said that he, you know, he wants to do like Jesus did. He wants his own three and a half years. Jesus preached three and a half years and then he was cut off. This Antichrist spirit, he's going to get three and a half years as well. But you know, the thing is though, he doesn't get it in that first three and a half of the seven years there that's allotted to Israel. But he, when he breaks that covenant in the midst of the week, that's when he comes in. That's why the Bible says the sacrifice and oblation shall be ceased. Israel will be offering sacrifices again, but they'll be stopped. Because why? That devil wants that. He wants that temple for himself. He'll claim to himself, probably no doubt, to be the Messiah. He's not the Mashiach. But the two witnesses will come. They'll prophesy in the beginning of that seven years. They will tell our leaders where they went wrong. Just like I, I did that little video not long ago. I forget what, which book of the Bible that is in the Tanakh there. But where uh, the prophet comes up and he tells the, the leaders, you know, that he said you've married, you know, it was told to him they had married in amongst uh, the, the, the rabbinical and the pol political leaders of the day, they had married the, 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 uh, the foreign women from, from the other countries, uh, you know, the, the, the Babylonian women, etc. 
And it just tore the prophet's heart apart to hear that. And he brought them forth and they, they repented for what they did and they separated from those wives. What was that? That was a type of what is fixing to happen now. They're going to marry Israel. Our leaders, our politicians, and some of the rabbis are going to marry, not all of them, but they're going to marry that ungodly prostitute Vatican and bring idolatry into Israel. But when the two witnesses come, they'll straighten the mess out. They're not going to be part of building the third temple. No, my brethren, those of you that think that, that's not so. They're coming to blast the Vatican, the Roman. They're coming there. You know, this is why Jesus comes back. See, they, the Jews knew that he was supposed to deliver them from under the hand of the Romans. They have to be back under the hand of the Romans to be delivered. And this time, he does come back to deliver them from the hand of the Romans. Interesting. God bless you. Very serious time. Will the Palestinians get a state tomorrow? Or in this case, when you're watching the video, it'll be today. So it'll be the 29th at that time. Uh, I can't say for sure it's going to happen right now. It might. They might get started right there. But we are at the door nonetheless. God bless you. Baruch Hashem. Blessed is the coming. Moshiach ben David. God bless you, my brothers and sisters.